we do welcome you to worship today. Um, those of you here in the sanctuary, those of you at home, hope that you are doing well this morning. Uh, do welcome you and hope that um, you've had a moment to look at the announcements that were rolling on your screen at the beginning of the service. They will roll again at the end of the service. Um, none in particular that we want to point out other except for movie night this uh, Friday for our children's ministry, but also for all of the families. Um, you're welcome to come to the courtyard, be watching Inside Out, bring a chair, a uh, blanket, but come and enjoy time together. Um, Friday night starting at 730 because we want to wait until it gets dark outside to enjoy movie night together. Um, at this time, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as Natalia plays our prelude. And I will light the candle here if you at home would light your candle as we welcome the presence of Christ into our midst as we worship together. morning. God of wisdom and all good gifts, we bring our lives to your altar. Remember that like Abraham, you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. Remind us this morning that the gift of freedom that comes to Christ is also a gift not to be kept, to be shared with others. Even as the world asserts that freedom is a ticket to go our own way, you made us free to be a part of Christ's body in the world, connected and interdependent. May the way we live and the way we love reflect that the kind of freedom we find in Christ. In Christ's blessed name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Come, Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I invite you to stand, even if you're at home, stand as we sing together. Teach me. 
If now you would please join me this morning for our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated at this time. As we come to our time of prayer, before we um, go into our time of prayer, I do want to once again thank you for all of you who have faithfully been giving to our church and to the ministries and to the Lord uh, throughout this time of coronavirus. You can give online. You may drop your offerings at the ch here at the church. And those of you that are here, hopefully you are familiar with our offering box since they're at the back, since we're not passing the plates right now. But I, we at the church are just so thankful for your generosity um, over these last months. And thank you so much for that. Um, and as we come to our time of prayer this morning, we do have several prayer requests um, on our list that are there in front of you. We want to be praying for Moon Watterson, for Jamie Goodwin. Um, and for Skip Speck and his family, I did get word that Skip's mother passed away on Friday, so our sympathy is extended to them as they have had um, quite a bit of loss here lately. Um, also, Rachel Morse, uh, Ray Jolly, Jerry McCarson, and Betty Brotherton, uh, we want to keep them in our prayers. And then our Christian love and sympathy is extended to the family of Tony Gooch, who is a friend of Jim Holland, and again, the, the Speck family as well. This morning, we extend our sympathy sure you know of others this morning in need of our prayers. I hope you have reasons to be thankful this day as well. So let's take a moment of silence to lift our concerns as well as our joys to the Lord, and then I'll lead us in a time of prayer. Our almighty, most holy, and amazing God, we are so thankful for you, so thankful for your love and your grace and your mercy and all the other many blessings that you pour out upon our lives. God, as we gather this morning, we do so to worship you, to realize how important it is to take time to focus on you, to gather, to pray, to hear the scripture read, to, to experience all the other aspects of worship. But Lord, help us to not only worship on Sunday, but to worship you every day by the way that we live, by the things we say and do. Lord, may our lives reflect Christ in all that we do and think. Yet Lord, if we're being honest, we know that quite often, more often than we like to admit, we give in to sin, we choose to be selfish, we do that which is wrong even though we want to do that which is right. And for all of our sins and our shortcomings and our failures, oh God, we come asking for your forgiveness. 
forgive us, O Lord. Restore us. Heal us, we pray. God, this morning there are many on our prayer list who need your mercy, your healing, your strength. We pray for each and every individual and family. And God, this day for all who are grieving, may you comfort and bring your peace as only you can. Lord, we need your guidance and your wisdom. As the coronavirus continues to spread and move and impact so many lives, We lift up that whole situation. We pray for those who are ill and we pray for all who have lost loved ones who are and those who are in the hospitals right now. We continue to pray for all of the frontline workers and the hospital workers and the paramedics and others who are day in and day out serving others. Lord, we know there are other so many other situations where brokenness is evidence. God, we need you. That's that's the basis of it all so come and fill us Holy Spirit come and fill this sanctuary come and fill the homes and places wherever people are worshiping right now help us to take our eyes off of ourselves and turn our eyes to you may we open our hearts and our minds and our souls to what you have to say to us this day And as we continue to worship, may all that we do and say and think bring honor and glory to your most holy name. It is in Christ's name we lift up this prayer as we say together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, For those of you who are here, as you came in, hopefully you picked up your communion kits. If for some reason you did not get one, Um, We invite you to slip out during our next song and get your communion supplies for later in the service. If you're at home and you did not come by and pick up a kit this week, we would invite you to find something in your house that is like bread, a piece of bread, a cracker, something that you might use. And then if you have any juice, and if you don't have juice, simply get water. And during this next hymn, if you're at home and you don't already have your communion supplies, Use this as a time to prepare your supplies so that later in the service we may all share in Holy Communion together. And now Alicia will lead us in our next song. Our next hymn is a favorite praise hymn, You Are My All in All. You may remain seated as we sing together.
thank you, Alicia, for leading us in that song. I, I love that praise chorus. It's one that, um, it's one of those that will go through my mind and just kind of, I don't know, some 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 music. Y'all, y'all, most of y'all have those songs that it can just take you into worship. So I was sitting there thinking, I, let's we could just sing that over and over, and I could just, you know, all right, Jesus, I, I feel you. And so I, I, when I'm dry, you fill my cup. That that stood out this morning. You know, just how God can God can do that for us. Well, our scripture lesson this morning uh, comes from the book of Romans. So I'd invite you to turn with me in your Bibles, or the words will be there on the screen in front of you to Romans chapter seven. Uh, we'll read verses 15 through, oh yeah, I didn't pause, <laughs> Romans chapter 7, and I'll read verses 15 through 25 this morning. Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. And let us all listen for a word from the Lord. I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. That is definitely a passage I could not look up from during reading because to find my place again would have been a struggle. You know, in many ways, this passage sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? I mean, have a little fun with your family this afternoon. Try reading it through three times quickly and see if you're not stumbling over the words. I mean, that's a great activity for the afternoon. It's it's a tongue twister. We, we discussed it Wednesday night in our uh, adult Bible study on Zoom, and Ann, Ann Robeson read the passage, and afterwards she was like, man, that's confusing. And it's like, yeah, it is, but at the same time, this passage is so wildly relatable. I mean, it sounds confusing, but then it's like, I can relate. I mean, I, I dare say every day we all struggle with the good we want to do, and the bad we don't want to do. And we know that time and time again, we have failed in our efforts. So we know this struggle. And so though while it sounds confusing, it, it, it works. It fits. You know, for example, how many of you have ever decided that, that you're going to not lose your temper? You're, you are not going to lose your temper. And she wake up and say, I am not going to lose my temper today. I'm not going to lose my temper today. I'm going to be calm. Natalia, nothing, nothing's going to rattle me. I'm going out into the world with Jesus, and I'm not going to lose my temper. And then you get home, and your kids have destroyed the house. Or a co-worker says something that sets you off. Or you're driving down the road, and somebody pulls out in front of you, and you slam on the brakes, and there goes coffee all down the front of your shirt. And all of a sudden, you're saying some things that don't sound so nice. Your face is red, and you're like, oh, man, I didn't want to lose my temper today. And I didn't. I wonder how many of you had this experience. You come to church on Sunday, and you're like, I am going to start reading my Bible every day. I'm going to read my Bible every day. I mean, I'm in church. We're reading it, so I've read it today. Tomorrow, start Monday, I'm going to read my Bible every day. And Monday, you read your Bible. Tuesday. You read your Bible, but then Wednesday comes, and you wake up with a headache, and you've been reading in the morning. You say, well, I'll read it later once my headache's gone, and the day gets busy. You get home. There's dinner to do. Somebody calls. Something has to be done around the house, and all of a sudden, you are exhausted, and you fall asleep, and it hits you when you wake up the next morning. Ha! Oh, I didn't read my Bible yesterday. That was the good I wanted to do, but I failed to do it. Or maybe... 
Maybe you struggle with something. I mean, we all struggle with things. Maybe, maybe there's a, something you struggle with. Maybe, maybe for you it's alcohol. Maybe you know that it's time for you to stop drinking. And, and you say, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Today is the day I am done with drinking. I'm not going to drink, and I'm going to take it one by one step at a time, one day at a time. I'm not going to drink alcohol. You go to work and you have a rough day. Normally you'd come home and you fix a drink, but you said, I'm not going to drink today. But then some friends call you up, and they invite you over to barbecue, and you get to the barbecue, and they offer you a beer, and you're like, oh, man, it'd be rude to resist. It's just one. And there you go. The good you wanted to do, but what came so easily? How many of us haven't dealt with that E word that's good for us? You know what I'm talking about? The E word that's good for us? Exercise. (laughs) I'm going to exercise. My body needs it. I need to get healthy. I'm going to exercise. And then, you know, there's this excuse or that excuse. We have the best of intentions. I bet all of you could give me a plethora of examples of the good you want to do, the bad you don't want to do, and how despite your best efforts, you still fall short. Romans 7, 15 through 25 is relatable, isn't it? If you're at home and you're saying, yes, it's relatable, just go ahead and comment. Say, yes, it's relatable. Let us know that you're following along. And congregation, is this a relatable text? Nod your head. Give me a thumbs up. Can you relate to this text? Many scholars actually believe that Paul isn't simply speaking for himself here in this passage. Rather, Rather than it being personal testimony, Most think that Paul is speaking on behalf of fallen humanity. He's expressing an inner turmoil that he realizes that all people face. He is stating something that we've all found to be true, and that is we cannot just decide to do good and then achieve it by our own willpower. The power of sin, the power of evil, lurks and pulls at all of us. So everybody that's sitting around you at home, everybody that's sitting around us in the sanctuary, here's what we have in common. The power of sin and evil pulls at all of us. Now it may manifest itself in different ways, but it pulls at all of us. However, here's the good news. There is help beyond ourselves. We do not have to be controlled by sin. There is a way that we can indeed do good. And our hope and our help is Jesus. And it's realizing that we need the grace of Jesus. And only by God's grace can we do good. You know, as United Methodists, that's, that's, that's at the core of what we believe. That we can only do good because of God's grace working through us. It is not to our own merit, but to God's credit that we do good. And our help also comes when we allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. There are several times in the scripture when Jesus is talking to his followers and he says, you know, the time is coming when I must depart from you. But when I depart, I will not leave you alone for I will send the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the counselor. Jesus even calls the spirit by different names. But he will come in my place and he will dwell within you. This is a very important concept to grasp. To begin to embrace that God's Spirit dwells within us. And if you keep reading here in Romans 7, remember when when Paul would have originally written this letter to the Romans, it wouldn't have had chapter numbers and verse numbers and been broken up. It had been one long letter. And so it's not like at the end of chapter 7, that's the end of of Paul's line line of thinking, his his, uh, stream of thought. And so if you keep on reading and go into chapter 8, he talks more about this idea of the indwelling of the Spirit. And I found it really interesting to hear the explanation from the message translation of the Bible. It's a little more modern translation. So so listen to how Paul describes the Spirit dwelling in us. He says, 
those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Obsession with self in these matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. Focusing on the self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God. Ends up thinking more about self than God. That person ignores who God is and what he is doing, and God is not pleased at being ignored. But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. Now that's pretty deep. So you may want to go back and read that later this afternoon. If you're taking notes, Romans 8. 5 through 11. Somebody at home, type that in the comments for me. Romans 8, 5 through 11. And that was the message translation, which if you're like, I don't have a message Bible, if you go on the internet to BibleGateway.com, you can look at multiple translations of the Bible. That's a great website, BibleGateway.com. So I was thinking about this whole idea about how on our, on our own power, we cannot break the power of sin how we desperately need the grace of Jesus to do good. And, and then I was thinking about this idea of, well, what, what's, why does it matter? You know, what, what, what's the difference on whether or not we recognize and realize the Spirit dwells within us? And see, see if this analogy makes sense to you. This, this kind of makes sense to me, so let's see if it makes sense to you. So um, have you ever heard about how sometimes when parents go out of town, the teenagers might like to throw a party. You know, the teenagers, when the parents go out of town, is when they throw the party. Why don't they throw the party when the parents are there? Hmm. So, so the presence of the parents in the home affects the actions of the teenager. Hmm? When a visitor's coming over to your house, maybe none of y'all do that, but if none of y'all do this, but if a visitor's coming over, Cameraman, I'm testing you. Look at there. <laughs> if a if a visitor's coming over, <laughs> we gotta have a little fun. You know, we gotta have a little fun. Folks at home, they they love they 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 love to feel like they're here. You know, um, so so a visitors coming over. Maybe y'all don't do this, but if I know somebody's coming over, guess what I start doing. Cleaning, yes, okay, some of y'all, you know, I, if I know somebody's coming over, I go to cleaning. I mean, I'm picking up, depending on how much time I got, depends on how much stuff gets cleaned, but anybody else guilty of ever just throwing stuff in the oven and the dishwasher and the pantry, like, it's going <laughs> it's to look clean for the visitors. And when the visitor comes, I, I don't do what I would normally be doing at home. You know, if I would normally be reading a book or, or um working on a project, when the visitor comes, I don't say, oh, good to see you, y'all go sit on the couch, I'm going to continue to, no, I, I pay attention, I visit with the visitor, because the presence of the visitor affects the actions that I make. Grandma comes to visit. I bet you usually eat a little bit better when grandma comes to visit. Maybe there are words you don't say or things you don't talk about when grandma comes to visit. Depending on who's in the home depends on how you, you act. And so, so the presence of others in our home impacts how we live in the home. Does that kind of follow me? Our bodies are to be the temple of God. And we, when we realize that God's spirit dwells within us, well, then that presence 
should affect how we live. In Galatians, Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is evidence that the Spirit is indeed living in us. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Aren't those beautiful things? Wouldn't we love to see more of that? These are the things, though, that we cannot accomplish on our own. But when God's grace and the Spirit works through us, well, then the natural result of that is that these attributes will begin to describe our lives. People will see in us love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. This is the fruit we will produce when we focus on God rather than self. However, Paul is also very clear in that passage to Galatians that um, there are things that we are fully capable of doing on our own when the Spirit does not dwell in us. He says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, The results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. All of those, y'all, we can do on our own. We don't need God's help. The thing is, it's not so much about us choosing to do good or or choosing to do bad. Though though we, We have a choice. I'm not saying that. But the important choice is choosing to grow closer to Christ. The important choice is to take the next step and the next step following Christ because the closer that you and I grow to God the more the spirit produces good things through you and me the more the spirit will work through us to bless others and to impact this world for the good so this is why spiritual disciplines and means of grace are so important if those are new terms for you Spiritual disciplines and means of grace are are the things that we intentionally do to experience the grace of God, to grow in our faith. Spiritual disciplines, means of grace, they involve things such as prayer, reading your Bible, worshiping, serving others, doing kind deeds, fasting, journaling, Praising God through music, listening for God in silence, participating in Holy Communion. All of these things we do, not just so we can say, oh, well, I did that today. We do these things to experience Christ. And as we do them, we feel closer to the Spirit who dwells within us. You see, it's not as much about you and I trying to be better as it is about you and I seeking Christ and allowing him to make us better. Because on our own, the power of sin is too strong. Think of it this way. Several years ago, a colleague of mine was uh, talking about marriage. And I still remember how he said something along the lines of, Husbands, your wives do not need you to love them more. Sounds odd at first, but then he went on to say, They need you to love Jesus more. Because as you love Jesus more, you're going to love them more. And he said, wives, your husbands don't need you to love them more. They need you to love Jesus more. Because as you love Jesus more, you will in turn love them more. And I think this same line of thinking carries over to being a good husband. 
good wife, a good mom, a good dad, a good friend, a good co-worker, a good neighbor, a good boss, a good teammate, a good person. You see, when we focus on trying to be a good whatever, we often put the focus on that, on ourselves. We need to focus on loving Jesus more, and as a result, we'll be better than we could have ever been on our own. So I can either focus on being a good pastor, or I can focus on loving Jesus more and in turn realize that as I do that, I will be a better pastor. You know, it's that whole, just think about that, because it's pretty deep, and I won't go down that (laughs) trail, but kind of think about the, the comparisons of those two thoughts there. Because, you see, some of you I know, some of you are trying so hard. And you get so frustrated because you want to be good. You want to be a good worker. You want to be a good mom. You want to be a good grandmom. You want to be a good neighbor. You want to be a good person. You want to do good things. Yet you get frustrated because the reality of Romans 7 relates to all of us. The good we want to do, we do not do. And the bad that we don't want to do is what we do. So what's the answer? How do we handle that when we fall short, when we don't want to do what is wrong, but we do it anyway? Who will free us from this life that is dominated by sin and death? The answer is the same answer Paul gave to the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. Who will free us? Thank God. The answer is and will ever be found in Jesus Christ our Lord. That is good news. And that is freeing news. Amen and amen. I really do hope you'll spend some time thinking about this message. Go ahead and read Romans into Romans 8. Um, Spend some time with that and There'll be a group at 1230, our Connections group, that has an online discussion. would encourage you all to jump on to that. The good thing is is that God is working in our lives. And through God's grace, he can do amazing things. Um, This morning, we want to take a moment to um, to, to do a special presentation and kind of shift in, but I hope you'll kind of see this in line. Um, Several of y'all have have had a chance to, to meet Chase and um, know that he is with us. Chase, you can go ahead and stand up here. One of the things you may or may not know about Chase is that he actually completed all of his requirements to be a licensed pastor in the United Methodist Church. Normally, (laughs) go ahead. (laughs) I told Chase y'all are clapping church, but he hadn't got to experience yet. So um, um, he he completed all of his requirements, and normally he would have gotten his pastoral license at annual conference, but guess what? Annual conference has yet to happen, and when it does happen, it's going to be primarily online. So um, I received his license this week. He was wondering where it was, and I said, I have it, Chase, (laughs) because uh, Reverend Ricky Haynes, our district superintendent, sent it to me and said, I would love for you to present this to Chase during worship so that your congregation could join in celebrating Chase's accomplishments and also so that you may know that that Chase is a a pastor, a licensed pastor in the United Methodist Church. So he can do all the the things that a pastor can do, and we know that's going to be a blessing and an asset to our congregation. So Chase, on behalf of the Mississippi Conference and on behalf of the Senatobia District, we present you with your license to pastoral ministry. So there you go. So he is all official, and um, I thought it would be really cool since he is able to do, um, by the United Methodist Church, all the powers of a pastor, that he this morning will lead us in our time of Holy Communion. This morning, uh, your response will appear on the screens. Please uh, Please feel free to join us as you feel fit to join along on the screen. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, 
day after day after day. Day after day after oh, day. I'm sorry. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the place came, you provided safety. When the evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. Freed the oppressed and announced the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. He is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick now. Day after day after day. Day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Use your little... Not time yet. I was testing you, you passed. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never really spiritually distant from you. We belong to your body. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. We will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or stick or, distort, or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. I invite you, for those at home, to prayerfully eat whatever form of bread you may have. The cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled again. I invite you, for those at home, to prayerfully drink and remember the sacrifice of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the family of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Day after day after day, you give yourself to us. In two or three gather in your name, in connection across the miles, and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit, as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Just As I Am Without One Plea. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing along with me. a moment and realize how amazing it is that God accepts us just as we are. It is hard for us to accept ourselves much less other people as we are, yet God says come. The arms on the stained glass window of Jesus remind us and we see those words underneath, come unto me just as you are. So as you think about your next steps this week, I do remind you that there is the Connections class at 1230. You can jump on there and talk with others on Zoom. Also, you can get online, go to Zoom, and I talk with others about the service. But I also hope that this week you will be intentional each and every day to go to God as you are, to, to practice a spiritual discipline, something that will help you grow closer to God, because in doing so, 
the Holy Spirit will then produce fruit in your life and in my life. And guess what? That is how we impact this world for the kingdom of God. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Thank you for those of you that are here in the sanctuary. Thank you for those of you who are worshiping at home. We hope and pray that you have felt the presence of the living Christ. And as you go now, may you go in the grace and the peace of Jesus. And y'all have a fantastic rest of the Sunday and a fantastic week. And Alicia will lead us now in our choral benediction. Maybe.